In seventy one, you're off to March. Yes, racing. the end of end of seventy one. Right, seventy two was in March. Yeah. And so, who are your drivers when you first started with them? I know it's Nicky Lauda. N- Nicky came in, um, but Robert Hood uh, was experiment with the Alpha engine. Mm-hmm. Um, D. Adamich and the Alpha engine wasn't really working yeah. well, but Nicky came in pretty quick from from the and uh, and Pete Peterson was the lead yeah. driver, and Ronnie was. I mean, the cars were not competitive, but Ronnie for somehow just I see yeah. it in Monaco one year we were there. It just was unbelievable, um, but a lot of that was Ronnie. Yeah, I mean, we could never get the car, the downforce, um, the thing was understeer everywhere. Um, you know, the testing we did, it, you could tell with Nicky, you know, he was second to, to Ronnie then. Of course. And then he was the young guy. Mm. Um, but you could tell that the way he would talk to you and... Um, Show, showed a lot of promise that why can't we do this? Mm. Well, what, if we did this, we could do this. Why don't we alter that silly front wing? You know, the, yeah. the Spitfire type <laughs> wing, the, the, the coffee table thing. thing. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Saying that, was, was that front wing adjustable at all? Eventually, we, we did some space. No, it wasn't adjustable. No. You, you'd have to put spacers in, take it off and put spacers. Yeah. But that. Um, that still aerodynamic. I don't think it ever went to wind time. No, no, but I didn't. No, I bet it, you know, and then we went to uh, the Formula Two chassis, put a DFV in it mm-hmm. with the radiators just bolted to the side with no, no induction. No. It's of course you know in a real hot country because there was no induction and no exit and mm-hmm. aerodynamics. It bloody overheat, you know. And it wasn't doing the wing a lot of good either. No, no. It was it was just radio. It's hung on the side. I, I'm, I'm, I can, literally. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that didn't. didn't but work. the car was quicker than. Yeah. And that was a seven two one. Yeah, seven two wasn't one. It? Yeah, that's right. Formed two chassis basically. Yeah. yeah. And we put bigger tanks and and all that. Still stuff. didn't make a lot of difference. No, no, no didn't. it was. No. It was not success. It was never going to win a world championship. No, that's right. Okay, we will go back to 68 then. What was your first F1 race? After the accident, I asked Colin, what do I do now? Because you were on the F2 team. Yes. Only at that point. Yes. Carry on. Yes, and also we, we, we were, at that time, me and Carl Neusty were building the, the Dion yeah, F2 the car. F2 car, mm-hmm. Um, which Jimmy was supposed to have yeah. tested, which obviously never happened. Only Graham and Graham got out of the car and said, it ain't never going to work. Mm. Mm, and that was it? That was really shelved. Yeah. Um, Chapman told me, okay, the team had left for Havana in Madrid. Mm-hmm. And Chapman said, what do you mean, what are you going to do? He said, you're taking uh, Graham's spare car down. On the trailer, when as soon as it's finished. Right. So. So you were in the F one team. That was it in the F one mm. team, and uh, basically, Billy Billy was on Graham's car, and uh, Eddie Dennis yeah. Herbie was. Jackie Oliver. Y- Jochen. No, not Jochen. It'd be Jackie Oliver, wouldn't it? Sixty eight. He replaced Jimmy. Yes. Jochen was on until 69. 69, Jochen. Yeah. yeah, and so I put me on Graham, basically in between the both cars. So you were flipping between the two in and between, whatever yeah, popped up. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that was the first F1 race yeah. with Lois. What's the result? Can't remember. I think Graham won that. Well, it would have been... Was it the first race after Jimmy's we accident? won the World Championship. Yeah. Yeah. We won the world championship that year. We were getting good results. I have a feeling I think won we won the armor. Yeah. Because it really picked the team up, didn't yes. it, after yes. what had happened. Mm. 
So that was it from then Formula One from then on. So okay, we'll we'll, we'll stay there. At the end of '68, obviously Jackie Oliver was dropped because he wasn't doing as well as what was hoped. It did Glenn, yeah, that happened. It did Glenn. So who did they bring in for '69? Well, we had John Miles. No, that was um, that was the four drive. Jochen, wasn't it? It was Jochen. Yeah. Yes, it has to be. So you got the current yes. world champion. But, yeah. And Jochen. Yes. He went not run a race at that point. No. F1. Everyone was waiting and waiting for him, wasn't he? Exactly. And what was Jochen like? Uh, Compared to someone like Jimmy or Mario, who were quite friendly and, you know, what was Jochen like? As a person... He would just uh, wouldn't talk too much about motor racing. Um, casually, he'd be talking about his favourite sport, which mm-hmm. was skiing, and um, and saying how you know a family and everything like this and right. everything. He was a nice guy, yeah. um, but racing just got on with it, whatever, and he had different different opinions about yeah. Um, <laughs> In Monaco, it was pouring with rain one year in the morning. He never turned up. The old man was fuming. <laughs> and then in the afternoon, he comes sorting down the pit lane. Sun's shining, it's all nice and dry. And, right. and there's an argument. You yeah. know, the old man, where the, how, you know, how have you been? You know, you're paid to do a job. Yeah. And then, so I said, what's the point? We know it's going to be hot this afternoon, not point of, Trash in the car in the rain. Mm. He goes out and front row the grid. Brilliant. You know, um, <laughs> which he would do. Of course. In I remember him. We tire testing in Zanfort with Jochen. Tire testing with Firestone. Mm. And he said, oh, "What are we doing testing? What are these tires?" And he said, and he was against it, but he, he contract he had to do it. Right. He said, okay, if I do the same time on each tire compound, I can leave because I, I, I want to get home in the afternoon. I've got things to do. Right. And they said, yeah, yeah, but that's not right. you know they come. And he went and did it. He did the same. Drove his ass off doing the same time with each different compound. Mm. So, and he went home. He flew home. I mean, how did that go down with Chapman? That sort of thing. He wasn't there. Oh, right. That was a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that was the Jochen, though. He yeah. Was, was... He was a bit of a... Yeah. Like that, but Jochen did the job. He was a Good tre- little driver. Oh, tremendous. Tremendous. Yeah. Just pull it out of the bag yeah. when necessary. Yeah. With his Monaco. Yep. Absolutely. When he wasn't nowhere near it. And exactly. Exactly. Suddenly... Thought I can do this, yeah, and did. Yeah, in the he, end. yeah, I know. He forced Jack Brown into a mistake, yeah, yeah, of all people. That was amazing. That that win, that, that was amazing, yeah, absolutely amazing. Uh, catching up, Jack, uh, yeah. coming up to the back of the pits and into the gas works, yeah, and hit the back there on that right hand right. right before the pits. Wow. So, how long were you at March for? Um, 70, and 72, 75, Heskis. Right, yes. <clears throat> Does it march after Nicky, Nicky, uh, left? Yeah. And then, um, and it went to, uh, we did a Formula 5000 car at March. Right. For the States. Right. For, for Skip Barber. Okay, yeah. Um, and it was sponsored by Go Navy, American Navy. It, complete disaster. It was just me, Dave Buller, and Dave White, three of us, oh. based in Worcester, Massachusetts, the first section oh. of the East Coast races. And scared me, I just. Jody Schechter won the championship that year in the Formula 5000. Yeah. And um, we were nowhere. I mean, it was skip. No. I mean, he's got a race and drive in school for the last 50 years, but um, didn't. But then from Massachusetts, we had to go to the West Coast. 
It's only come home for a year. Right. We're, yeah. We had a, a, a big, big truck towing the car on the trailer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stayed in Santa Ana, California, mm. for um, for the West Coast races. We, Gene Mason Racing, it was under. Right. Gene Mason Racing. It was just. It was no good. No, it was hopeless. It was hopeless. So what? That, was that virtually an F one car with an, with a five thousand yes, engine was. on the back? It was. It was. Wasn't it, it was. To all intents and purposes. Absolutely. But no engineer, no, nothing. Yeah. Really? No, no. And he was paying for that? Yeah, we had no, it was just us, the three of us. Yeah. Um, no engineer, no team, no team manager, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And the money, you know, where's our expenses? Where's our travel money? Where's oh, the petrol it? money? No, oh, oh, it was hopeless. Was good. After that, it was Hesketh racing. Yeah. So what persuaded you to go to Hesketh? Well, uh, Harvey Possaway, um and Nigel, is it Nigel, Nigel, looking after the car. I can, uh, I'm thinking about it in a minute. Mm. Um, he was running Formula Three, James. Yes, and then. They bought a March Formula One, and I, by how he used to say, "Well, you know, we're looking for people. Why don't you come over? Uh, we're going to be based in Toaster." Mm -hmm. And I said, "Okay." So we done a deal with Bubbles Horsley and Alexander Heskis, and I started as chief mechanic. And uh, is that your first time as chief mechanic? Y yes. Mm -hmm. Because Pete Kerr was chief mechanic at March. Yeah, of course. And uh, I didn't realise that Harvey said we're going to build our own F1 car. Oh, okay. okay. So that's what was happening. So they started to build the F1 car and we right. built the F1 car and raced it. Mm -hmm. and really, a lot of mechanical, only structural failures in those days. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, you know, for non works works so team, we did yes. pretty good, mm. pretty well. Won yeah. Dutch Grand Prix, yeah. won Daily Express Trophy. Um, and where were you when uh, Philip Zanfor? Zanfor, I was building the the new Hesketh. So um, you weren't there. No, I weren't there. <laughs> so me and Nigel Stroud. We stayed back and to finish off the new Heskett for testing. Right. And, uh, you know, we tried all sorts of rubber suspension. Right. Mm, work. That didn't work. No. Tried servo brakes. Mm. Servo? No. no way. That didn't not work. <laughs> we said to Harvey, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, it's difficult to bleed the brakes with this servo. Right. James said that I press the pedal and nothing happens. Is it does it stopping or is it stopping? Can't feel. Right. There's no feeling. Right. No feeling. You go. You go into a corner and he's got his foot on the brake. And it's slowing and then the servo would come in. Oh. So that was abandoned. Right. Fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, Esketh was different to anything else. Yeah. Absolutely. Ever. ever. And ever. It will never be repeated. <clears throat> And you know Lord Hasker for twenty three at the time when he started that, yeah. and, and it's fun. It was fun time, mm. and but it's serious on the racing side. Serious on the racing. We yeah. had a buyer. We had, um, um, you know, first the, that we were lifing stuff. In the end, we were learning. Have you done that before? No. It, nowhere. Nowhere. Really. Nowhere. And uh, had our own engine shop mm. and dyno, mm. and where they. Had to put super, super, super silences on it because it was disturbing the pheasant breeding. Yeah, up at the house. At the house. Yeah. Because they weren't laying eggs, you know. <laughs> and because uh, they had big shoots. Sure. From all the people all over the world used to come for pheasant shooting. Mm -hmm. And Alexandra, you know, was, James, was party mad. Of course. 
they were party mad. Mm-hmm. And how many have you been on the team then, for, at that point, in 75? <clears throat> Two guys on the car. Because it was only one car, wasn't it? Yeah, it's did only you have one a spare, car. Dave, in the end? In the end we did. Yeah. But um, it was... But at the start... Um, Two people on the car, uh, actually three people on the car, chief mechanic, uh, truckie, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we had our own truckie, so, and, and the fabricator used to come as well. Right. So it would be three, four, five, six, which was quite good for F1 in those days. And uh, Unbelievable. It was, you know, in the Silverstone Grand Prix, it was get there early and Lordy bought his butler because that wasn't far from the house was it no just down the road it's not far from the house and we had a motorhome un- unheard of yeah. you know, a motorhome and a big 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 American state car and uh, and the butler came first morning with his white gloves and champagne oh. for the boys at 7 o'clock in the morning <laughs> come along boys you just got on the circuit had you yeah, Got to the circuit. Yeah, champagne for my boys. So we all had to have a glass of champagne before we started work. <laughs> Way <laughs> to go! You on. Yeah, excellent. Hell yeah, you know, and, and we had a, a own, our own marquee for catering. And, that must have been the first. Oh, something yeah. like that. Oh, the chef was. Going, <laughs> then we had kidneys and masala sauce and all the. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, unbelievable! But it was just. I mean, you were used to you were lucky to get a burger at that point. Yeah, exactly. And then we used to have his jet ranger there, helicopter, mm. which we used to you know, do a bit you of testing. Used... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was available for you. Yes, yes, for the crew. Ah, excellent. The Dijon we used the helicopter. We we're sixty-eight miles from the track in the chateau. Right. And we said, "Where the hell are we going to get there?" So, so uh, and then remember the the madam of the chateau told the farmer to clean the cow's muck on the country road because the English lord is coming. Oh, and right. we thought, joking. no, it's true. It, the guy had to sweep the... Because he put the cow up the road for milking every day. Sure. It's only a little farm. Yeah. But they used to do the yeah, shit course. all over the road. Yeah. So they had to clear that up. For <laughs> yes. And she was going to Paris every morning. Right. Early hours of the morning to bring back fresh meat poetry, fish, for dinner every night. And he had all his mates from from public school there. Sure. You know, all the... Yeah. yeah. And he'd fly back from the circuit? We, for the crew, you... <clears throat> um, used to fly us in, four at a time, come back at land, yeah. then four back in, and we used to land at the paddock, and all the other mechanics are going, what, you know? You know, the boys... The Eskith boys were here in a helicopter. Yeah. Know? But you, you're still taking the racing side of it oh, to- ultra serious. Ultra serious, absolutely. Yeah, so it's not oh, mucking absolutely. about. It's no, just, no, it wasn't a jolly no, no. at all. Absolutely. It was, <laughs> and you wouldn't, in, in the end, because before night, um, we had to take off before night. So So there's no all nighters. Luckily, we didn't have any engine changes. Yeah. Otherwise. <laughs> but, uh, and he wouldn't let anybody eat until the boys got washed and dressed upstairs. Right. So we had some late dinners, you know. So the others couldn't eat until we got there. Sure. And it was <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. It was in the swinging on the chandeliers. There was a big chandelier coming down the spiral case right. in Carnoustie. He got up there? Yeah, he got up there and the madam went mad. I bet she did. Oh, we had to get him down. And there was a piggyback fight in the lounge. In the dining room. In this room. old chateau. Yeah. We had, we had like 20 for dinner every night. Yeah. All his mates. Mm. And the wine. No expense spared. No expense spared. No. And there was other things that... Sure. I Went on. Didn't want to yeah, really quite. go public Ancient. on that. Yeah. <laughs> it was just rather entertaining. Sure. Yeah. You were involved on Lotus 72 from the very, very start, weren't you? With the yes. build of the first chassis? Yeah. Yeah. Would, would you have helped to build on it? Would you have helped to build it? Yeah, help, help, literally, or assembly. Uh, 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 literally, the fabrication shop would do the monocoque, and you would be asked to go and help them as well to do the riveting. Right. Um, they'd rivet, and you'd do it underneath mm-hmm. with the dolly hammer yeah. underneath with the riveting. It, yeah, all, all sorts of stuff like that. And also, um, jigs, 
help making jigs right. um, mm-hmm. for our brights and, yeah. and, and, and things like that and nickel bronze brazing which I was which I did yeah. nickel bronzing mm-hmm. um, you know everybody all the boys could do that well mm-hmm. nickel bronze up brights and stuff like that so when you finally saw it assembled it must have struck you that this is really different from the previous car Definitely. The 49, when you, even just to look at it. Well, the torsion bar. All of this was, stuff. You know, you had the front torsion bars up inside the tank, and, mm-hmm. and it was very difficult to set up, mm-hmm. and there was, you know, then, because you had no springs. Did you have an inkling that, that it was going to be a good one when you started running it? I mean, obviously. We thought, it, well, this is the bee's knees. Because um, it was so different. So different. Sure. No, uh, it's totally unconventional as Formula One was in, at that time. Yeah, torsion bar suspension, and um, and the setup was different. And you, you had the reaction, the splines would be different from yeah. to the ride levels, and, uh, and and you had different torsion bars. Um, and of course, it would have been the first Lotus designed to have wings, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, I think wedge shape. Yeah, um, specifically. Like the forty nine was a forty nine, but then stuff was then, added. Then it's added, but this was but straight off, absolutely. straight off with with, with wings, yeah, and hundred percent straight off from, from the drawing board. But there was wings. no wind tunnel. No, no. It was so no, did someone, either Morris or Chapman, to look at it and go, "Oh, we have it at that angle." This has always been a question. Um, we. They experimented with wings mm. at the rear. You had the three tier, yeah. and you had the yeah. single, and the different gurneys mm-hmm. on the back. The front basically stayed the same. Um, adjustable front, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Um, you could adjust the front wings easily. But aerodynamically, subject to the air box. You didn't have an air box wing. at the start, did you? At all? No, not to start with. Pretty early, no. And then they modified that. Mm-hmm. Um, for more downforce. So it was basically, let's say, the rear wing for the elements, take it out and give it a few laps, see what it does, come in, increase it a bit and see what that does? Yeah. Because there's no wind tunnel. Plus, we did, did, did um, at one point, though, Morris started putting some oil, different um, oil on the, yeah. on the rear wings to see the flow, Yeah. what the flow was. Mm-hmm. He did quite a bit, a lot, lot of that stuff on the back. Right. And uh, that it, helped. Yeah. yeah, and he took a photograph of it and <laughs> and basics. Mm. You know, without the well, wind there's nothing coming. else you could do. No, at that time, was there? No. And different speeds, at different get with whatever gear ratio yeah. and what speed you were. And they change the wearing, they do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but most of it was done at the tracks, racing. You know. And the other thing was, there's no computer to um, no, record that info, that's, was there? You've got to do no, it all yourself. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Through it, timing and nothing at all. Yeah. No, you had no feedback. You couldn't get back to the pit and say, "Okay, let's play that back. Let's see if you what that right. did." Nothing. So it was driver. Yeah. Driver feel. Tire temperatures. Tire temperatures. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Because they weren't slick tires. No, that's right. Still slightly treading. Absolutely. Weren't they? 